Light Temple, thank you so much for having me. If you've been following the news, I'm happy to be here because in D.C., all hell's breaking loose, so I appreciate being here. <laughs> I always love going to um, poetry slams and open mic nights because the interaction between the artist and the audience is always pure. And so whenever the artist says something that really resonates with the audience, the response is typically this. So if I say something that resonates with you, feel free to engage me, okay? <laughs> Show of hands, how many of you would readily admit to being fake? Anybody? Whoa, you actually surprised me. Most people are not that honest. <laughs> but for those, of us who, <laughs> for those of us who aren't that honest, typically what happens is we wake up, and we prepare for our day, and by the time we get to work or school or the DMV or Safeway, we put on a whole other face, right? The one that everyone else sees. And it's not the most authentic you that you're presenting to the world. And so as we go about our lives, it's really important that we start taking into consideration our most authentic selves. I recently published a book called Fake. F period, A period, K period, E period, exclamation point, Fake Lives, Real Friendships. And it follows four professional supermoms. They've known each other since undergrad. They're the best of friends. They were in each other's weddings and baby showers and all of that. And they have lives that people actually envy. And from the outside world, Everything looks perfect, but behind the scenes, all hell is breaking loose, and only they know how bad it really is. And the, the, the title of the book actually um, represents two things. One, the four main characters of the book, Faith, Adrian, Krishna, and Evelyn. And then it also is an indicator of just how inauthentic each of their lives really is. So fake is very much art imitating life, even though it is a work of fiction. And I will tell you, just as a quick side note, all the scenarios in the book are real. I did get permission. <laughs> um, so my talk, very much like my book, will cover three main points. One, live your most authentic life right now. Doesn't matter the age. Own your truth. Two, friendships. They are so valuable to us as we grow and as we journey along our life. Because when life shows up, and I promise you it will, in addition to your family, and for those of you who don't have family nearby, trust me, your friends will get you through. And three, understand the importance of faith, that vertical connection between you and your God. That is also what's going to get you through life when it starts to show up. And then, once you've figured that out, then it's important to identify the gifts that the universe has give, given you. We're all unique. And it's so important that you go about the business of then sharing your gifts with the rest of us. 30 years ago, I sat where many of you are right now. I was excited about graduating from the American University leaving my undergraduate years behind and moving forward into this new life of mine. I thought I was going to go on to take the LSAT and then on to law school. I took the LSAT, didn't get to law school. And I thought I knew who I was. I really thought I had a real clear understanding as to who Vivian was. I had no freaking clue. And all too often, we get those things confused. We confuse ourselves, we confuse in our thinking what we do or what we want to become with who we actually are. So my question to you today is simple. Are you living your most authentic life? Are you owning your truth? And it doesn't matter the age, as I said before, but you do have an obligation to try to figure that out. Own who you are and own your truth. And at what point, Will you begin to do so? This isn't an admonishment, but it is a legitimate question, 
And I recognize that it's a bodacious question. And for some people, they may be already doing it, living their authentic life, and that's great. But most of us are not. We're walking around with masks that we present to the world, and then we go home, and we take that off, and we don't like who we see, and we don't like who we are. So when I was graduating all those years ago as a college senior, and I was looking at that next stage of my life, I was focused on the wrong things. I was focused on getting a job, starting my career, making a lot of money. I came from that generation, if you will, that focused on getting into that rat race and making a difference, making a splash, not a difference, making a splash in the rat race and leaving our mark. No one really focused on what, the, what was most important, which was figuring out who you are, looking inward, understanding who and what you are, your weaknesses, figuring out whose you are, and the fact that there's something bigger than you out there, and owning that and accepting that, and then figuring out where you fit in all of this stuff called the universe. Because as I said before, you have an obligation to share that with everyone else. So the next question should be, how am I going to do that? How do I become my authentic self? I think it's relatively simple, but now I'm in the third quarter of my life and I kind of figured things out. And I think it starts with spending time with you. Most of us don't even enjoy our own company. And that's really sad because you're with yourself all the time. Identify your weaknesses and your imperfections. We are imperfect people living in, imper living in an imperfect world, and that's OK. And then once you've done that, accept those imperfections and your weaknesses, and then move forward into the strengths. They will bubble up to the surface. And love yourself. Love your weaknesses because you are unique. We all are. And then define you for you. Identify your boundaries, your boundaries for life and how you engage and interact with people. If you don't set your own boundaries, other people will set them for you. You forgot I didn't. <laughs> so own your truth. And I believe very strongly that if you define, if you combine those three things, that is owning your truth ultimately. You certainly won't figure it out in a day or two or three months or next year. In fact, it could take you many years. And that's expected. This is a process. Introspection takes time. Introspection is not something that has a deadline on it. Or when you get a, your college degree or your graduate degree or you start a family or you get married, whatever it is. It's a process. You're evolving just as we are all evolving in this world. The world is changing around us and we must adapt accordingly. So what are you going to do about that? Life is going to show up. And for me, life showed up after 16 years of marriage that ended in divorce, plain and simple. And what I, what I did not do up until that point was take into consideration how important it was for me to start really loving me. Thank you. <laughs> Life doesn't always show up in pretty little packages, and so that's something that we have to really take into consideration as we go along this journey. Don't get caught up in the labels. Establish your own rules. Determine what your own labels will be. And as a matter of fact, go out and get your labels and get your bag, as Cardi B would say as well. <laughs> we expect that from you. We want excellence. But don't allow your labels to define who you are. Case in point, when I graduated from undergrad, I became a college graduate. Label. I went on and got a master's degree, label. Along the way, I was a junior analyst, a mid-level manager, then I became a senior executive manager. I, 
I became a subject matter expert in a very white male dominated field in defense. Label, label, label. I went on and got my PhD from Howard University. Dr. Vivian Luke, huge label. My parents were so happy. They're still happy. <laughs> but big label. At 31, I, I was married. I got married. Mrs. Label. A few years after that, I became a mom for the first time. Great label. A couple years after that, I became a mom again. Label. My kids started school. I became Raven's mom and Elle's mom. And by the way, kids don't care what kind of labels you have. They, you are Raven's mom and Elle's mom. But those are all labels that I wanted for myself, and that's fine. But the problem is, along the way, I lost myself. I lost lots of myself. I lost my passions and my interests outside of the corporate and the, and the career-oriented labels that I was seeking and driving so hard for. I lost big pieces of myself. I didn't make time for my friends the way I needed to, and I wasn't unique in this. A lot of career women do that. And men, too, but I'm a woman, so I'm going to speak from my perspective. And then life starts to show up. And then what do you do? My passions and my interests, I put on that proverbial back burner and decided, oh, I can get back to those later, after I retire, when the kids grow up. That was a mistake. Spending time with my girlfriends that I used to really enjoy doing, the things that we would do together, back burner. But here's the good news. I've been divorced six years now, and I realize I'm in the third quarter of my life. I make time for the things that are really important to me. Really important to me. My corporate life was great, and it served its purpose, but spending time with my girlfriends means everything to me. I don't put them on the back burner anymore. They're just as important to me as my children are. I'm more present when I'm with my friends. I'm more present when I'm with my children. And I encourage you to do the same. Because the perception of perfection that was crumbling around me left me feeling devoid of who I was at one time. So as I worked to overcome the embarrassment and the devastation of a failed marriage and a broken family and try to rebuild and having to rebuild myself financially, and by the way, divorce is really expensive, avoid it at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> and I continued to raise my children. I started moving through this process of reevaluation and self-reflection, really important. I chose to be more authentic in the way I was living my life. I recognized that the labels that I'd acquired for myself, while they served the purpose, they weren't who I was. I was no longer allowing them to define who I am. And so as you go about your life, and you begin to acquire your labels, and like I said, please do. Remember, fake lives, real friendships. It's all important. And at the same time, continue to establish the relationship with the vertical. Because when life shows up, and it'll show up as in the form of divorce, the loss of a loved one, impending financial destruction, or a serious medical illness, and life kicks you down, and you are on your back, and you are looking up at the universe, and you're saying, how the hell did I get here? Because I've worked hard, and I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. Remember that the only way you can get back on your feet is if you get on your knees and believe. So strip away the pretentiousness and the fake facades and own your truth so that when you are in the third quarters and fourth quarters of your life, you can put out that pure energy into the universe that's going to be received so warmly from everyone else. But the only way you can do that is to do it sooner. You guys are graduating from school soon, or will be, or maybe you just did, Doug Dillon, uh, the first speaker. Do it now, don't wait. Do it now, and share your gifts with us. 
But most importantly, go out into this world and be the most authentic person that you can be. So start living your most authentic lives right now. Thank you.